Hi and thanks for watching my video. If you don't know me, my name's Kirsty and I'm going to be talking about my first powerlifting meet which was on the 17th of March. Um, I've tried to record this video a couple of times but now I have notes uh, because I kept missing stuff out so if you see me looking down, that's why. Um, why am I making this video? So I found it quite hard to find all the information that I needed um, going up to the date of my competition. I'm not a member of a powerlifting gym and I don't have a coach or really that many people around me who kind of know the ins and outs of the competitions. So whilst it might seem second nature to someone who's done it before, there's actually a lot of components um, that you need to prepare for and especially for someone like me, I'm, I'm quite a nervous person so I like to know every single detail of what to expect um, before competing in anything. Um, so I felt like maybe this video might be helpful to someone who's trying to decide if they want to do a powerlifting competition for the first time and maybe they don't have like a support network around them. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is to choose a federation. Now I, as you can probably tell from my accent, um, live in the UK. Um, I'm actually living in Manchester right now. So there's a few different federations in the UK. I'm maybe not the best person to talk about the different federations because I don't know that much about the differences between each one. So I'm just going to talk about the federation that I lifted with, which was the Amateur British Powerlifting Union, so ABPU for short. And this is the drug tested side of the British Powerlifting Union. If you compete in the British Powerlifting Union Federation, um, then you don't have to be drug tested. I personally wasn't actually drug tested. I think that from what I know, this is done randomly and I think it's possibly done before weigh-ins. Um, no one actually explained that to me. But um, I wasn't personally drug tested, as I said. I think it's quite rare for you to be tested before your first ever meet. Um, that said, I'm not on drugs, so it's fine. Um, and I probably wouldn't risk it if you were thinking of trying to compete in a tested federation and you were using some kind of performance enhancing drug. Um, then you will choose a regional qualifier to um, attend. So how it works is you start with regional qualifiers. There's a few of these all over the country. So as I said, I live in Manchester. I competed in the northwest of England qualifiers. And what these do is they qualify you for um, British national competitions, so you have to meet a specific total, that means you have to lift a specific amount of weight in order to qualify for British competitions and for European and world competitions after that. Um, however, you have to go to the British competitions and come, I think it's the fir either first or second in your class um, in order to qualify for Europeans. So. Um, after that you'll choose a category, so categories are firstly done by age, um, if you're still a teenager then there's a teenage category and then there's a junior category for people who are age 20 to 23 I believe, um, so as I am still 23, I turned 24 in June, so I'm just still in the junior category, um, I was still able to compete as a junior. Um, there's after junior, it's just an open category, um, up until 40 years of age and over, and this is split into master's categories, so there's like master's one, two and three depending on um, your age. So it's quite good because um, powerlifting is something that you can do over a long time, so people might accumulate more and more weight as they get older, and it's supposed to kind of... Um, represent the amount of experience that a person might have in the sport. Then um, you'll want to choose whether you're going to do raw or equipped lifting. The difference between these is that with um, raw lifting you can use knee sleeves or no knee sleeves for squats um, and you will have no kind of um, extra equipment which helps you such as a compressive vest for bench press and for um, I think for squat and deadlift 
They also wear um, a sort of supportive shirt. Um, I don't know that much about equipped lifting, so again, I'm maybe not the best person to talk about that. But, um, and then I think there's also a wraps category where you can wrap your knees. I think it just kind of stabilizes you in a squat, so it's, it's a bit different to kind of lifting without the wraps. Um, I chose raw because I don't actually use knee sleeves at all. Um, I think most first timers will probably go for raw, um, I would say, just because that's the most um, easily accessible to everybody. Yeah, and then you will choose either full power, which is all three lifts, so squat, bench and deadlift, or you can choose bench only or deadlift only to compete in. Um, from what I know, bench only and deadlift only is really for people who really specialise in those lifts, so it's maybe people who are a bit more advanced. Um, most beginners, again, will do full power because they want to um, do all three lifts. Weight class. Right, this is a really important one for first timers because, especially in the ABPU, um, the weight classes, especially for women around my weight, are a little bit tricky. So each federation might have different um, weight classes. So this might be something that comes into play when you're choosing what federation to train with um, or to compete with. With ABPU, I found a difficulty in choosing my weight class because there was a 60 kilo weight class for women and then a 67.5 weight class for women. That's quite a big jump. 7.5 kilos in weight can add a lot onto your um, strength. So I sit right in the middle of this. Um, my kind of body weight before I started preparing for the competition was about 62 kilos, but then because I was reducing my um, cardio and just kind of doing like slow um, strength training, I wasn't using as much energy in my workouts and I actually ended up putting on um, a couple of kilos over you know, the, the two or three months that I was training. Um, I did have to decide whether or not I was going to cut weight. Um, I could have cut weight to the 60 kilo weight class if I really wanted to, however, I started off trying to do that and then I realised that it was really, really affecting my strength, it was making me stressed, I had other things going on at the time in my life and in the end I decided that for a regional qualifier it probably wasn't that important for me to cut weight so in the end I um, didn't cut weight, like I said I actually put on weight and I just kind of allowed myself to not worry about my weight at all and I think for me this was the right choice because um, I was able just to have fun on the day and not worry about weighing in and being tired and cranky and dehydrated. Um, for the British competitions, if I want to enter, I will need to think maybe about cutting weight, but um, for me, I think for the competition, for a regional competition, and this is something I would advise, advise to other people as well, is probably don't cut weight if you feel like it's too much weight for you to go before you reach um, that lower weight class. The weigh-ins are done for ABPU, you can do it either the day before, in the morning, in the evening, or you can do it on the morning of the competition when you lift, however this does mean that you have to get there around between 7 and 8 a.m. so um, it's quite early. So I weighed in the night before, um, I just went to the venue and I weighed in and then I went home and I was able just to relax um, and get an early night before waking up early the next day. You will have to get specific kit if you want to compete, so I had to buy a singlet, which is the kind of, uh, it's like an old fashioned man's bathing suit basically, it's super hot. Um, and underneath that you'll wear like a cotton t-shirt, you're not allowed to wear um, any kind of compressive or sports material t-shirt, has to be cotton, this is something I didn't know until the night before. Um, and you'll also buy um, long socks for deadlifting, this prevents, um, it's kind of gross, it prevents blood from getting on the bar um, when people are you know, potentially scraping their shins on the bar. Um, you can also buy a belt, so I bought a powerlifting belt and that was a really good move for me because it added um, a lot onto my squat and it also helped me um, sort of support my back a bit more when I'm deadlifting. 
Um, and you can buy knee sleeves as well if you want to support your knees for squats and you can buy lifting shoes as well if you want although I just train and compete in flat shoes. Program of the day, it works in flights so there's an A flight, a B flight and a C flight. Um, as far as I know for most competitions the lighter women will be in the A flight every time and then it'll be heavier women and lighter men maybe mixed together like it was in my competition um, and then it'll be heavier men. If you are a light woman expect to be starting the day early and you will have to arrive pretty early to warm up and everything so my um, competition started at 9am on a Saturday mm -hmm. and um, I had to be there from 8am <laughs> in order to warm up so <laughs> yeah um, takes a lot of commitment but it's fine um, I was worried that I was going to be really tired and like groggy and not my best because I never train at 9am normally. Um, oh, God, even the thought of it makes me uncomfortable. I was worried about being tired but in actual fact I was so hyped. Come 8am after I was starting to warm up I was like good to go. So if that's something that you're worried about, don't because the adrenaline gets you going. For me, um, there wasn't any kit checks in the ABPU unless you wish to declare a record. Um, they have a list of their records on their website, so I didn't have to have any of my kit checked. I know that this happens with some other federations, but there's no kind of special requirements for um, kits for the ABPU, so that's quite good for lifting for the first time as well. After you've warmed up, uh, you will have to share some equipment when you warm up probably because um, the venue for the regional qualifiers generally speaking is quite small I think, um, for mine it certainly was, but it was fine, we all just shared equipment to warm up, it was pretty amiable. Then we lined up and you basically, um, you start the day with squats and then it's bench and then it's deadlift and um, it's each flight is done by basically the weight that you're lifting so they will progressively put more and more weight on the bar as you go along. The people who are um, in your flight who are starting with the lightest squat will begin first and then it will move up to um, the heaviest first squat and then you'll all do your second squats and then you'll all do your third squats and then you um, have a break whilst the second flight and the third flight do the same. They go through all their squats. Um, so you will start with um, an opener, um, which will be quite light. Um, I started with an opener that I could do for normally like, you know, good six or seven reps on a good day in the gym, um, because I was quite nervous to start off with, with the squats. Um, I think everyone is, it's the first lift of the day, it's just quite nerve wracking, um, but start with something really easy if it's your first competition and it will put your mind at ease because you'll get under the bar and you'll know 100% that you can push it up. Um, and then you get progressively heavier so your second lift will be um, maybe something that's close to your max in the gym and for your um, third lift you'll choose something that's you know pretty much as much as you can possibly lift. So I'll just show you all of my footage from the competition now. Um, three squats, three bench and three deadlifts.
So Dixon, Dixon, Bennett, and Boom to Bed. Good opening round so far, but we've got the lifts in. Okay, something I didn't mention was that with your openers, you can actually change them on the day. Um, I had to tell um, the person who was doing my weigh-ins um, what my openers were going to be at the weigh-in, and that helps them kind of prepare with set up for the day and with organising um, the order for um, you know the first flight. But you can change it if you're warming up and you feel not as strong, or if you feel much much stronger than you expected, then you can change your openers. Uh, after each lift you will tell somebody what your next lift is going to be. So as you saw from the footage I started with 90 kilograms for my first squat and then I told somebody that my next lift was going to be 105 um, and after that I had to make a decision. I thought I was going to do 110 but because I was feeling really strong I decided to go for 112.5 which was my top lift that I'd ever hit in the gym. In terms of choosing weights I found that I decided to play it safe and just choose all the top weights that I've ever hit in the gym. So I knew that I could do them, but they were still challenging for me. And I think for me um, going in as someone with not that much support behind me, you know, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to fail any lifts on the day. So I just decided to play it safe. I don't want to take any risks um, and sort of you know, choose a weight that it turned out that I can lift, basically. Um, and I think it was good for me because it was a, a confidence boost. All I had to worry about was getting in front of an audience and lifting up, and I knew that I'd done it before. So that's something I would probably advise if you were going into the competition by yourself and you didn't have a coach to advise you. I would say just stick to lifts that you've hit before in the gym. More of a personal question, how to know when you are ready to compete? So. For me personally, um, I've been lifting, doing squats and deadlifts for about three years. Um, the first couple of years I wasn't too bothered about um, sort of putting, I don't know, getting that much stronger. Um, and I was training at a gym that um, basically had a lot of fairly elite um, weightlifters and powerlifters. Um, 
training at it and there were a lot of girls which it was amazing to train alongside really strong girls uh, but I was always comparing myself to them and I didn't really think that I was that strong. Even the past year um, when I made it more of a priority to gain strength um, I still wasn't anywhere near as strong as these girls so I moved um, gym, I, I actually moved from Edinburgh to Manchester last September and I, I joined a commercial gym and obviously I was one of the more stronger women there um, but I still had it in my head that I wasn't that strong um, but I met a woman there who um, has done quite a few powerlifting competitions and she told me like no you're, you're definitely strong enough to compete for the first time um, and only then did I really consider that actually maybe I could do a powerlifting competition um, I did have to teach myself a couple of things. I taught myself how to bench <laughs> last November, so I've not been benching for that long. And I also taught myself about then um, how to do a sumo deadlift. So that was quite a steep learning curve, I guess, to do in just a few months. But um, I'm glad that I did because um, it was not as stressful as I thought it was going to be to prepare for the competition. And yeah, I, it's been such a good experience that I'm so, so glad that um, it was recommended to me and that I gave it a go. Um, and I also realised at the competition that it's only really you, like yourself, that you're competing against. I, The whole day I didn't have a single feeling like I was looking at other people and thinking, this is someone that I need to beat. Um, I don't know whether it was just the federation that I was with, there was such a friendly kind of support of it, almost like a family environment, that I didn't feel like anyone there was competing against one another. You're, ju you're all just going in there to lift as much as you can and really to beat um, your own targets. Maybe it'll be a bit more competitive at the British competition, I don't know. But certainly, if you're going in for the first time, don't worry about what everyone else is going to be lifting, because I was so worried about like embarrassing myself in front of other people. But honestly, if yeah, if you're thinking about it, just do it because no one cares. If you've not been lifting for that long, there's people are still going to cheer you on because you're you're giving it a go and you're trying to do something which most people will never ever try. So I would say just be confident and just go for it. Yeah, in terms of coaching, I like I said, don't have a coach. I would say that you will make faster progress if you are training with a coach and I've found it quite frustrating at times that I don't make progress as quickly as um, some people I know who are getting coached. However, that's just a lifestyle choice that you've got to make um, in terms of whether you're willing to pay for coaching, whether you're willing to kind of set aside times in the week that you will get coached rather than maybe just going entirely by your own schedule. Um, I'm not saying that I will never have a coach in the future, I think if I want to progress more then I might have to get one, just at least for a little bit of advice, but that's not to say that you can't compete if you don't have a coach, because I did, and I did absolutely fine. I wasn't the strongest person there for my weight, but I was by no means like weak at all, I think I was actually kind of in the same ballpark as other people there. So. Yeah, don't worry about it if you don't have a coach, but do bring people along for moral support because it's really nice to have people cheering for you, you know, in the corner and to take videos for you and that kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't advise just going along there by yourself. I think it's it's definitely better to have um, people there who you know are like your friends and who can sort of, you know, pat you on the back and just give you words of encouragement. So I think that's actually everything that I've covered. Um, yeah, I hope that maybe this video can just help even just one person, honestly. Um, I really wish that I'd had something like this to watch before um, I was making the decision to compete and before, you know, when I was preparing, when I was training. Um, because it can be difficult if you don't have people around you who are um, familiar with the sport of powerlifting. Good luck if you are thinking of training for a competition. You'll have a great time, you'll have so much fun. The atmosphere is amazing and everybody cheering each other on, even people that you don't know. Um, it's so supportive and it's just such a fun day, honestly. So do consider it if you've not done it before. Um, and happy training. <laughs>